Uh, and thank you for that nice introduction. Day-to-day uh, -day care, uh, kind of like the overview of things that you're going to, that we're going to talk about. Uh, communication does change, uh, has changes with dementia. Uh, strategies to cope with these changes, we'll talk a little bit about that uh, to, to kind of get uh, people thinking about uh, little changes that they can make. Uh, activities of daily living and how to assist your family member, the importance of leisure activities, and most important, several fun ac activities that will give us a glimpse of how the person with dementia might be feeling, because mm -hmm. sometimes we need to stop and think. Okay, this is a, just a little one here. Uh, uh, you arrive home, if you can just picture for a second, arrive home and you find that someone uh, in the household has left you a message and it's called, uh, Frank phoned, call him. So when you think for a second, make a list of the steps that you need to make or we need to make in order to return that phone call. And, um, you know, uh, that can be... Uh, we have to think of, you know, who's Frank, mm -hmm. and uh, is it a family member, is it someone from work, is it a neighbor, and then uh, uh, where would we get that number, Is do we have a list of numbers, do we need to go to the phone book, uh, all kinds of things. When you stop and think of uh, the process, and actually the process that our brain uh, kind of goes through because, you know, you, you read a, a, or you hear a message and then that goes to one side of the brain, then the other side of the brain gives us an action to do that. So there's lots of complicated things going on uh, in our head. Um, but now imagine a person who has uh, some memory loss and are trying to return Frank's call. And there's a lot of uh, different things that have to be connected in order to do that. And uh, as I mentioned, as I listed the things that we'd automatically do without thinking, uh, somebody who has uh, memory loss uh, may not connect all of those little steps and get them all uh, uh, into line. And uh, I'm going on. So, uh, the types of difficulties they might be, as I said, you know, well, where's the phone book? Uh, this person, Frank, uh, are they, do I know anybody named Frank? You know, so. Changes in communication, and that's kind of like the middle stage. And uh, word finding problems sometimes increase with, uh, with the different with the different stages. And um, in my line of work, I work at the health sciences in emergency. So I have often families come in with their family member who has dementia. And I always like to get my information from my patient that I'm talking to. And uh, sometimes the word description words are not there. And, and I have to uh, uh, keep that in mind when I uh, am talking uh, to someone with, uh, with some memory loss or dementia. Uh, comprehension also decreases, and comprehension is understanding. Understanding words uh, and phrases. So there's a change in that, and it's always good to remember. Uh, I tend to talk fast, <laughs> so I have to remember, slow down, and uh, uh, so that the other person can can understand me, uh, but I also have to be aware that the uh, person I'm talking to may not get all of what is being said. Yes. When you're talking about them losing their comprehension ability, mm -hmm. is there any point of explaining something to, say in this case, my mother, over and over again? Because we're having some issues with her lack of understanding. Sure. And is it any sense of going through the rigmarole 
continuously. Like she right now doesn't understand why she should have home care. Yeah, she doesn't see course. she doesn't see the value in it. Yes. She doesn't think this yeah. person does anything for her. Yes. And we try and reason yeah. with her as to bing 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 why this person needs to be there. And she totally yeah. disagrees with us. Yeah. And we're repeating it many times during the day. She's getting anxious. So if she's not comprehending, like where would we go with it? I, you have to respect her mm -hmm. as, as a person who needs to uh, be able to understand. And you have to keep your explanation simpler. Mm -hmm. And you don't need to go off on a tangent on all of, all of the reasons. But, you know, it is frustrating for the family member to have to repeat, but I think you need to do that. But, she, but she's not even understanding mm -hmm. on, a, on a minuscule level. Yeah. She really feels that she doesn't need, she really needs this yeah. individual there, but she feels she doesn't. As you can't, yeah. even if you simplified it, you know, yes, the lady helps you, she helps you with your meals. No, she doesn't do a thing for me. Mm -hmm. I, I do this myself. Yes. I can take yes. care of myself. Yeah. Because mm -hmm her focus is uh, not as broad mm -hmm. and she just I guess sees what she needs to see but uh, in terms of safety have you mentioned those kind of things with her oh we, we've yeah. done all we've done all that and we put yeah. things and in place to keep her safe but mm -hmm. she really really feels that she's as independent as she ever was yes. that's right and which is yeah. completely further from the truth you know and you can't really change that picture for her completely. You know, you, can, uh, you can't uh, make the comprehension be there if it's not. No. So uh, it's important for you not to get frustrated because you are repeating things. And uh, perhaps... Well, she's not remembering no. previous conversations. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Exactly. And that, so just wondering, like, how much... How much do you try to convince someone that's never going to understand? Yeah. Do you know? Did you want to add something? Well, yeah. I, I mean, I would just say, like, I think there's always a line, like, in terms of if what you're going through to explain to her, if it agitates her, upsets her more. Well, that's what we're yes. afraid of. We don't right. want to go there. Sometimes there's a line where I, mm -hmm. you know, and it's personal choice. Yes. But we've chosen to, like, my grandma used to ask where her sisters were. And they were all dead. Yes. So to have a conversation with her, oh, you know, your sisters are, are dead, yeah. that's an upsetting thing Very to say. Yeah, so you so can, good. what we did was reframe it. Yes. Um, and because I think you need to respect the person's dignity. And part of that well, is if no they're question, asking a question, question, you know, yes. you want to try to answer. I think that's yes. Dot, what Dot was saying. Yes. Yeah. Um, one, uh, the only thing I would think to try is to try to all, maybe explain that it helps you. Like to put it on yes, you, that's right. because you need the help, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's not yeah. just her that needs help. Mom, I know you manage fine, but I'm yeah. I'm worried about this, or yes. I don't have the time to do this. But so she that's doesn't why. value yes. the family's perspective, mm -hmm. you know. And then the only other thing that I would say is that when somebody picks a problem like that, like why is that person here? We don't like them. That was for my grandma. That they went through that when she they had a cook come in for a long yes. time. And they, in this situation, it was in Toronto, there was a different cultural background, so it was very obvious yeah. that this person kind of wasn't, hadn't always been there. Yeah. And why is this person here? Yes. Um, but it passes, because yes. people get a fixation on something, yeah. but then as the disease progresses yes. and things change in their brain, they may find a different focus. Yes. And that's why, again, I think Dot was saying, yeah. you know, at some point you have to just be patient. Yes. And um, kind of, you know, take the brunt of it as you as a caregiver and understand that that's what you're doing to try to make them comfortable. So there's no that. easy, you know. No. And it's not like you're not doing the right thing or, mm -hmm. you know. I yes. So. Yeah. But you can't not answer her either. Well, that's where I'm coming yes. from. We, we totally yeah. respect her. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we repeat yeah. and we repeat. And, yeah. uh, but I, I, yeah. again, uh, perhaps saying, I get worried. If I'm not here, I can't be here, so this helps me. Yes. This is for me, not yeah. for you. Mm -hmm. You know, you can. all you can do is try different yes. things. Yes, and that's what we've been doing. Yes. You know? yes. Mm -hmm. um, next piece here is digression increases. And 
the way I interpret that is, uh, you know, you're into a conversation and then they're talking about something else. And I have to bring them back to what we were talking about. And again, it's really important uh, for me not to uh, lose my patience. I will get my information <laughs> eventually. But this is a progression of an illness. And uh, conversation diminishes oftentimes because when you have all these pieces, the word finding problems, the comprehension de decreases, and then the digression, you know, sometimes they just stop talking or the conversation stops. And, and we have to uh, uh, include them and get people talking, members, uh, uh, people with, uh, the, uh, with the illness. Uh, they have trouble following the conversation, and if there's too many conversations going, you know, around a good dinner table, everybody's chatting. It's mesmerizing. It is, yes, yes. And uh, I have a mom who's 92, uh, and right now has has no signs of dementia, but yesterday there were six people in the room and she had trouble following the conversation, got really agitated because there was too much happening and she wanted to hear bits and pieces of everybody's conversation. So it was an eye-opener to me to that's not a good kind of situation to have too many people talking at one time. And also contributing to a conversation as, as uh, the disease progresses, so it's important to include uh, the person in the conversation, and and keeping our conversations light and lively is is uh, uh, is good. And I kind of jumped ahead to <laughs> to my next slide. Uh, listening, listen for the meaning of words, because uh, as uh, word, uh, remembering words and what have you, uh, those uh, things that we take for granted often will get mixed up. Uh, and you have to listen intently to conversation. So an example here is car versus bus. What meanwhile they might be chatting about the vehicle that just went down the road or, or the vehicle they traveled in. Uh, another one that I, I remember is pen and pin. You know, the pen you're writing with, the pen that goes on my shirt. So, you know, and there's lots of words in our English language that uh, are similar. And the next one there, the sound-related words, cap and cat. And in Newfoundland, we have many di dialects per community, never mind uh, how, how words are written, you know, is how we express ourselves. So listening patiently is really important. Uh, because everybody wants to contribute to a conversation. And uh, I've had experiences where uh, the person I'm, I'm talking to gets excited to express what they want to, but the words get jumbled. And I, you know, as I ask them to slow down and then I listen slowly, the conversation continues. Uh, be concrete and direct. So keeping our conversation simple. Uh, we don't have to have long. And I'm not a university person. <laughs> I keep my sentences nice and simple. Uh, and uh, because I need to communicate well. And I don't know a whole lot of big words, so it's great. <laughs> I can get my job done. <laughs> uh, use words that are familiar to the person. Uh, also, uh, as perhaps as as the, the disease progresses, uh, you know, uh, words that uh, maybe from years ago were used, like you say for, uh, you know, I'm going to go pick up something at the store. One time that was called, I'm going on a message for somebody when really it was running an errand. You know, so thinking about what the conversation and the sentences are about. Uh, is is important to be attentive when you're when you're talking with someone. Uh, use descriptions. Uh, use descriptor words. Uh, hand me the red mug on the table, so it's specific to the to if you're given a direction. And uh, I tend to think of uh, uh, dementia as a chronic illness, and there's many many chronic illnesses in my line of work. 
It can be uh, high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, heart disease, and then there's dementia, you know? So uh, looking at the disease in terms of a chronic illness, and we have to deal with chronic illnesses.